me, Lucy Parsons. Welcome to today's show. Today we're talking about three personal statement mistakes to avoid to make sure that you get university offers. But before we dive into today's show, I want to tell you about something that I hope you'll find helpful if you um, are thinking about university personal statements. So I run a personal statement masterclass, which is an online course which takes you step by step through the process of choosing courses, subjects and universities, preparing your application and actually writing your UCAS personal statement. Now for people who are signed up for the personal statement masterclass, I've got something happening um, between the 1st and 8th of July, which may be very interesting for you. So we've got three live masterclasses for vocational subjects, which are medicine, law and engineering. So on Thursday the 1st of July, we've got Artie Lodia, who is talking about applying for medicine and dentistry, and she's an expert in supporting students with applications for these subjects. Then on Monday the 5th of July, we've got Helen Chaplin, who used to be a corporate lawyer, and it now works in the Extraordinaries Club as an academic coach, but has very successfully, over many years, supported students with applications to law degrees. So she's going to be talking about law on Monday the 5th of July. And then on Thursday the 8th of July, we've got special guest speakers from the School of Mechanical, Electrical and Manufacturing Engineering at at the University of Loughborough. And the two people who are coming to talk to us are Professor Will Witto, who is a professor of radio frequency materials, and he's historically been very passionate about getting students um, to study engineering, and particularly women, and diversifying um, the people who apply. Um, I first met him on Twitter many years ago, well, probably at least six years ago, um, because he was so vocal in promoting engineering as a subject to students. And joining him will be Dr. Laura Justin, who also works in the School of Mechanical, Electrical and Manufacturing Engineering, but she's the co-director of undergraduate admissions at Loughborough for Engineering. So they're going to be giving a talk on that day. So the Personal Statement Masterclass is for everybody. I have just decided to bring in these experts to talk about these three vocational subjects because there's a little bit more and often the requirements are not that well publicised, exactly what you need to do and how much of it you need to do before you write your personal statement. And so we've got these experts coming in to really talk about the quirks and intricacies of these vocational subjects. So the idea is that you'll watch these um, masterclasses from these experts and you'll use what they tell you, but you'll also use the main framework in the personal statement masterclass to write a personal statement that you know is written easily takes much less time than it would otherwise, causes you much less stress and gets you offers, so long as you've got the necessary predicted grades at your chosen universities. Basically makes you a really, really competitive candidate. So if you like the sound of those live events, please come over to the Personal Statement Masterclass and sign up. Um, You'll find it at personalstatementmasterclass.co.uk And if you are aiming to study another subject that isn't medicine, dentistry, law or engineering, then the Personal Statement Masterclass can help you too. That you can come over to personalstatementmasterclass.co.uk and see some of the things that other people have said about it. You know, it's helped a broad range of students from subjects already subjects like medicine but also design, architecture, English, psychology, economics and also help people to get into Oxbridge as well. So it really really works 
and um, I would love for it to help you to make that really competitive application with much less time invested and much less stress taken up in the process. Okay, let's get on with today's show. Three personal statement mistakes to avoid to make sure you get university offers. Year after year, I see university applicants making the same three personal statement mistakes. These mistakes cost them lots of time and would deprive them of offers at universities if they weren't put right. Read on to find out what they are so that you can avoid making them. So the first mistake is that students start writing before they're ready. To be fair, this is a mistake that most students make with any kind of writing they do throughout school. They start writing before they're ready. So how do you know when you're ready to start writing? Basically, when you've planned out everything you want to say, you've given real thought to how you want to say it, and you have a logical structure to follow. If you start writing before you've done those things, you are absolutely certain to have to write far more drafts than you need to, wasting valuable time that you could be spending either having fun or working towards getting the grades you need to get that offer. It's not easy to avoid this mistake, however, because many schools ask for first drafts before year 12 students break up for the summer. And most students aren't ready to start writing at this point as they want to use their summer to complete supercurricular activities they plan to write about in their personal statements. However, my personal statement masterclass can show you exactly how to think through everything you've done, all the reading, the school visits, the work experience, all that kind of thing. Plan it all out and put it into a logical structure so that your personal statement is pretty near perfect when you finish your first draft. So, for example, in the right section of the personal statement masterclass, I tell you what paragraphs you need in there and also roughly how long they need to be. So you can write to the character count, which makes sure that you don't write far more than you need to write and have to spend lots of time editing down the words that you've carefully put onto the page because that's really quite a heartbreaking process. I've worked with many students who, you know, a personal statement is... um, 4,000 characters and I've worked with many students who've written six or 8,000 characters and you can just see the look on their faces as you cut, cut, cut stuff out of their personal statement because, you know, but it, to them it was so valuable and they've worked so hard over writing it down. Um, but it has to be done. <laughs> um, so it actually makes far more sense not to overwrite and you know just write what you need to write and be much more focused and thoughtful about what you write in the first place which saves you all that heartache and time in the editing process okay the second mistake that i see students making with their personal statements is telling rather than showing so many students really struggle to write about themselves and blow their own trumpet They fall into the trap of telling admissions tutors what they've done, writing boring lists of what they've read and their work experience. The trouble is, a list doesn't tell admissions tutors what they need to know. The vast majority of universities are really interested in how you think. What you've done is only interesting as the stimulus for the thoughts and ideas you've had and the questions you've asked as a result. It takes a very particular writing style to show universities how you think in the context of what you've done, rather than just telling them what you've done. My personal statement masterclass teaches you this writing style with worked examples for different subjects so that you can easily put it into practice in your own personal statement. So just to summarise that, what you really need to be doing in a personal statement is showing 
admissions tutors how you think. And you only write about what you've done as a springboard to showing what you think about it. The last thing you should be doing is writing a list of everything you've read or all the work experience you've done because that doesn't show the critical engagement that admissions tutors are actually looking for. Okay, the third and final mistake we're going to talk about today is getting the wrong balance of extracurricular and supercurricular activities. Extracurricular activities are things like sport and music that you do in addition to the academic curriculum. Supercurricular activities are things you do to broaden and deepen your understanding of the subject you want to study at university, such as further reading. And if you'd like to have a look, I've got a blog post all about supercurricular activities, which I've linked to from today's show notes. If you want to find the show notes for today, you can find them at lifemoreextraordinary.com forward slash PS mistakes, or one word, PS mistakes. So it's lifemoreextraordinary.com forward slash PS mistakes. 20 years ago, universities were more interested in extracurricular activities. However, as competition for top university places has increased, universities have become far more interested in supercurricular activities. This is because the range and depth of supercurricular activities a student has engaged in demonstrates their commitment and passion for their subject and differentiates a large pool of applicants who all have similar high grades. This means that students who really want to stand out from the crowd need to write much more about supercurricular activities than extracurricular activities. There are details of what proportion of your personal statement to spend on each in my personal statement masterclass. So I want to make sure that you don't make the personal mistake, the personal statement mistakes I've talked about today, which are starting to write before you're ready, telling rather than showing, and getting the wrong balance between extracurricular and supercurricular activities. So I really hope today's episode has helped you to understand these mistakes and why these people make these mistakes. Now, if you'd like more help from me with your personal statement writing process and to make it as quick and successful as possible, please come on over to personalstatementmasterclass.co.uk And you'll get an excellent personal statement, if you sign up, (laughs) that gets you offers from your chosen universities in way less time and with far less stress. And if you've got questions about the Personal Statement Masterclass, please just email hello at lifemoreextraordinary.com. So I really hope you found today's episode helpful and interesting. Good luck with writing your personal statement. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.